Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It is a water pump that uses no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing and falling water. I do a lot of testing with these, and typically they are used to bring water up to a storage tank, and then you use the water further downhill after you've pumped it up. Um, but I've been asked a question. What happens if you siphon water up out of a creek and then down to the pump? Does that increase siphon height cause a higher head pressure, or does it still just use the original height? So, a very interesting question, and I thought I would see what happens with this pump here. So here's the setup. I've got a pump right here, which is approximately five feet down from the bucket, which is my water source currently. And it's about a 20 foot, half inch drive pipe, comes to a half inch pump, and I've got a pressure gauge here on the end. And that will essentially allow us to see what our pressure is over a, uh, a set amount of time. So maybe later we will do a test with this to see if the flow rate increases, but for now, we're just gonna use the pressure. So, the first test we're gonna run is using this 20 foot drive pipe on about a five foot drop. Then, I'm gonna set this board up here to my railing height, and we will bring the drive pipe up to that, and it will essentially give us another four or so feet of drop. So we either will see an increase in pressure, or it will remain the same, or drop. So anyway, Here's our source bucket. I just got a garden hose filling this now. Typically you would use a creek or a small river as your source. So, go ahead and make sure our drive pipe is full of water. We need to make sure all of the air is burped out. As you can see, the air bubbles are coming out right now. Both tests will start off the same. The water is at the top of the bucket. Right now it's just gonna go straight down five foot of drop over 20 foot of distance here. The pressure is out of the pressure tank and it is set to zero here, which is good. So we're gonna give this exactly one minute of run time and then I will stop the, the stopwatch. Uh, so of course we will have to click this a couple times to get it to start running on its own, but uh, that's just all part of the test here. <laughs> Super quick disclaimer, this pump has been sitting out and I let it freeze with the water in it and so if it has a crack it may not work we may have to rebuild this a little bit okay i've got the stopwatch i'm gonna go ahead and push start and begin clicking this one two three four okay we're cycling on our own now that took 12 seconds to start All right, about 40 seconds, it's reached the max potential there. All right, in one minute. Okay, our pressure reading. So 12 seconds to start the cycle, and it took uh, one minute to hit uh, 45 PSI. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you here. Yeah, so 45 PSI. All right, for the next test, I'm going to uh, let all the pressure out of the tank here. There we go, back down to zero. Let's see how this is going to work. My thoughts were that I could just spin this board around here, set it up on my railing, and that would hold yeah, yeah, this up here. So for all you physics professionals out there, what happens if you take water from this height, siphon up and over, and then back down? Does it increase the uh, head pressure, or does it maintain the same? We're about to find out in a real live practical sense. So basically the question was, if I've got a pond right here, emptying water out of spillway, that goes down this kind of a slope here, but I need to lift water higher than this five foot can uh, lift to. If I do this, does it increase my drop by that much? So let's go ahead and find out. Our bucket is almost full again and we will get this test underway. 
Now this test does use the siphon, unlike the other one. So what I'm gonna do is remove the drive pipe from the pump real quick and get this siphon started. And I'll have to go refill my bucket up. So hopefully this will go ahead and get the water sucked through here. Should have a little bit of air in there. Yep, there we go. All right, nice. That should be the full, full flow right there. Get this reattached. The first test, it took about five clicks for this to really get going on its own. And somewhere around uh, 30 PSI, I had to put my foot on here because this will actually pull the drive pipe out of that bucket. So I'm gonna try to do that the same so that the, the test is fairly consistent. But Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. So, opening the drive pipe. All right, here we go. Oh, stopwatch. That's kind of important. All right, reset. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, okay. Oh. All right. So hopefully that's gonna be consistent enough with my foot being on there. There's 30 seconds. Remember me saying that I left this out in the cold? My brass valve here has a crack right down the middle. It's letting the pressure back out. Luckily, it was getting up to about where we uh, wanted to see it. And I'm also seeing something else I need to fix. There's enough jump here in the drive pipe that it's reducing a significant amount of uh, kinetic energy. And so let's replace this by just, I guess, pulling that right off. And we can just put the pressure gauge directly onto the pump itself. Just right here. And we'll just have to let the pressure out manually if we need to. Okay, that's too bad. Yeah, it's got a crack right in there. You might be a redneck if you use a gravity chair to hold up your ram pump drive pipe. <laughs> This is exactly why I do ram pump testing while my wife is at work. So, uh, with all of that being locked down and the leak out of the T or the, the Y here, I think we are ready to go. So, let's go ahead and get this test back underway. So the pressure is out and we are still primed and ready to go. Okay, I've got the stopwatch reset here. Let's go ahead and click this on. And here we go, start. One. Two, three, four, five, six, okay. All right, I'm gonna put my foot on here when it hits about the 30 PSI. All right, there we go. Basically, you wanna have this thing locked down as tight as you can. Otherwise, it's gonna have uh, less efficient pumping. Ten more seconds here. All right, there we go, one minute. Fascinating results we've got. So the max pressure, it's a bit foggy, but it hit 63 PSI. Significant increase from before by almost uh, 20 PSI. Man, that's crazy. I guess now what we need to do is run a couple of garden hoses and see if that translates into a flow rate increase uh, or a, uh, a height increase would be uh, also equal. I don't really have a place set up yet for that, but let's see what we can do. Super thankful my wife actually does not watch my videos because I just got one of our good measuring cups from the kitchen. Look what I've set up. 
I rigged up a little pulley system to this branch up here. I'm not exactly sure how high it is, but it's high enough that we will be able to get a test. So I'm gonna use this cup down here and I'm gonna measure the non-siphon and the siphon and see which one produces the most water. Now, because I already have the siphon set up, I'm gonna get those results first, but I will show them to you in order. So here is the non-siphon first. I kind of figured this was gonna happen. I've only got about, uh, I don't know, 20 foot of lift from where the pump is, but we're already going over five, but potentially eight feet of head pressure. There's not nearly enough lift to maintain the back pressure. And so no matter how many times I push this valve to lift water up there, what's happening is there's not enough back pressure in here. And so the water just pours out of this and uh, basically never allows the pump to start. This means I'm gonna have to revisit this test when I have a much higher lift than 20-ish feet. So in the future, we will be setting up a different setup here and we will adjust the siphon as we have here to see what kind of lift we can get by increasing the head pressure through siphon. Very exciting. Thank you so much for asking this question. If you have more questions like this, write those in the comment section down below. I would love to give them a test. If you have a creek or a small river and you want to lift water, be sure to head over to landhouse.com and pick up one of these pumps for your very own. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.